So here we are. What up, y'all? It's the good boy, Damien. And let's just cut straight to the chase. I just watched my life as Inukai-san's dog and, well, let's just say maybe your parents were right about anime after all. Now, let's not act like there haven't been insanely weird degenerate anime before. I mean, if we had to make a list, I don't think my life as Inukai-san's dog would even crack the top 20 as far as weirdness goes. But it is worth talking about because we just had some big AAA list anime that involves some hot girl that treats some dopey dude like a dog. So, I mean... I'm basically saying the Chainsaw Man walked so that this show could run. But hey, y'all probably don't even know what I'm talking about, right? I highly doubt there's a lot of audience overlap with this show and like a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure or, or Mob Psycho or Monogatari. Actually, maybe Monogatari fans will like this one. Y'all are weirdos. Anyway, My Life as Inukai-san's Dog is a tender love story between man's best friend and man's better half. It's a story about an everyday guy that finds himself in a rough situation, and a girl whose morality has really gone to the dogs. Instead of wanting to give a dog a bone, she wants the dog to give her a bone. It's bone. Cause, get it? Bo Cause it's like, it's about a girl who wants to f her pet dog, okay? The gist of the situation is that this guy wakes up in the body of a cute little dog and is taken home by Inukai-san, the so-called unattainable ice queen of his class. A bunch of weird shenanigans happen and we're gonna talk about all of it. And the best place to start is with the OP, which literally has dog barking noises incorporated into the song. Yep, this is what you're in for. I can subscribe. The first episode starts off with our main character confused and disoriented as he wakes up in his new dog body. It's all in his point of view so we get to see things from his little doggy perspective and by see things I mean everything. He's taken home by Inukai and the show doesn't waste any more time getting straight to the point. It's uh it's even more blatant than you think. Uh, the show doesn't even try to hide the fact that it expects you to have your cock out while watching this. It's almost a requirement because nothing else happens. Inukai spends the whole episode bathing while generic soft rock music plays and the show gives up showing things from the dog's perspective because we just get like drone shots of her uncensored titties. You see, Inukai is pretty similar to a lot of waifus in recent years like Komi or Bochi. She's not good at expressing herself or getting along with others which is what earns her her Ice Queen nickname. However, there is one thing that Inukai likes. It's, it's, it's in her name. I'll, I'll give you three guesses. <laughs> Which is fine. A, a lot of people get along better with animals, but uh, she gets along a little too well with them. <laughs> now, I've never owned a dog, so I don't know if it's common behavior to deep throat your little pupper's snout in the bathtub, but at least she isn't making it weird by barking while she's doing it, am I right? Oh. Anyway, she names him Pochita, which really nails home the Chainsaw Man connection, then gets turned on when his tail flicks her vagina. Overall, a pretty standard first episode of anime. In the next episode, Inukai takes our boy out for a walk and they have completely normal interactions, like when she gets aroused from him sniffing her pussy. What made me laugh here is the fact that she talks to this dopey animal the same way you see girls talking to your average rom-com MC. Our boy Pochita saves Inukai from being hit with a ball and she gives them the classic lines like, Oh, you're such a pervert for touching me, but th th thanks for saving me, but Baka. And it's like, ma'am, that's a dog. Anyway, there's another scene where she gets turned on watching him take a piss, but we gotta keep it moving. It's then that we meet another character, Nekotani, and going by her name, I'm sure you can guess what her whole deal is. She's afraid of dogs. Which of course is nothing crazy, a, a lot of people are scared of dogs, so I mean, in that case, if she can't stand being around dogs, then she should be safe from any weird hijinks going on in this goofy ass show, right? Nope, we get a scene where Pochita has to climb through her shirt in order to kill a centipede while she lies helplessly on the ground in fear. Talk about a dog eat dog world, am I right? But hey, our MC is a good boy, so he helps out Nekotani by licking her wounds clean. I mean, that's not that weird, right? Of course not. That's why Inukai has to come in to make 
make it weird. You see, like any doting pet owner, Inukai gets jealous that Pochita would dare to put his tongue on another female. So she kicks a wall and makes Pochita lick her feet, which... I mean, yeah, it's kind of wild, but it's not time to call the cops yet. Okay, now it's time. She's like, she's like running at him like a titan. Jesus Christ. While all this is happening, Nekotani proves to be the best character in the show by default of being the only one who realizes how insane this all is. Luckily, the episode ends with Nekotani confronting Inukai about her concerning behavior. The two have a heart-to-heart -heart and Inukai realizes that while it's okay to be crazy about dogs, it's not okay to try and take advantage of an animal that can't consent. With Nekotani's support, Inukai eventually learns to express her love of dogs in a more healthy way and she even learns how to form meaningful full human connections and she ends up living a happy life while still taking care of Pochita. I'm just playing none of that happens instead she dresses up like this while attempting to seduce Pochita. Okay so next episode we get the absolute bare minimum amount of plot and I emphasize the quotes around plot because calling this a plot is like calling ketchup a condiment. Um, I'm from Chicago y'all wouldn't get it. Inukai gets an invitation from Nekotani to study at her place and what do you know she lives next door to where Pochita used to live before he turned into anime scrappy do. So he hatches a plan, right? He's gonna order a package to Nekotani's house while they're over there, then rush out the door while it's open so that he can get back to his old house to find some answers as to why he ended up in this pseudo isekai furry situation. What follows is an insane Mission Impossible sequence where this literal canine uses Inukai's thumbprint to unlock her phone and order something off AliExpress. That's the short version of what happens because I don't even know how to describe what's happening here. Once they get to Nekotani's house, Pochita sets his plan into motion. Unfortunately, he couldn't foresee Inukai jerking his tail off. And you think I'm joking when I say that, but she jerks his tail off. It's actually even more explicit in the manga. Yeah, believe it or not, what we're seeing is the toned down version. Anyway, Pochita manages to get away, but not before violently groping Nekotani. And he makes it back to his old room only to find out that, oh my god, a mysterious girl is already there. Yup. In a shocking twist that puts Attack on Titan to shame, it turns out that Pochita's old Kohai was secretly in love with him and has been coming to his room to take care of his plants since he disappeared. Of course, we know that he was just turned into a dog, but his Kohai, named Usagi, and his parents have no idea what's happened to him. It's kind of like the situation with Subaru and ReZero. His family and his only friend have been searching tirelessly for him, and their despair starts to grow and get the better of them. There's a really tender moment when Usagi Usagi succumbs to her loneliness and Pochita realizes how his absence has affected the people around him. It's super emotional as it's a pretty smart insight into how an isekai-like situation would affect your loved ones and I'm really impressed that the show was able to craft such a genuine heartfelt moment and handle it maturely. Oh, now she's masturbating on his desk. Honestly, a relatable moment. I mean, who among us hasn't masturbated over people we're supposed to be grieving for? I mean, I'm an Evangelion fan, so I know all about masturbating at inappropriate times. But yeah, that basically introduces us to our three main girls, um, at least for this first part of the series. At the time I'm making this video, there are like five or six episodes out, so rest assured there's still plenty more to come. I'm sure y'all are just dying to see what happens next. That's the show though, it's glorified fetish hentai with production value. Or, well, at least enough production value to have a live action credit sequence. Thankfully, this is all they show though. I'm not sure I want to see any other parts of this anime in live action. Real talk though, it, it's easy to dunk on this anime and be like, haha, how weird, or like, this is such a trash show, or like, you know, this is why I can't tell people I watch anime. But can you really knock a show for being unabashedly what it is? It's kind of like Miru tights. The show knows you're here because you have a foot fetish and want to see a bunch of chicks wearing tights, so it just does that. It gives you what you want. My life as Inukai-san knows you're here because you read too much Animorphs as a kid and also that Makima is your phone lock screen. So it's like, okay, I here, let's cut the bullshit. We'll give you exactly what you asked for. So yeah, it's very easy, low-hanging fruit to make fun of this show. Haha, <laughs> this chick wants to fuck her dog. Time to go give it a 1 out of 10 on my anime list. As if I'm a genius for figuring out that a show about dressing up in cosplay to seduce her pet would be trash. Uh, look, okay. 
So there's a scene in the show where Inukai has like a moment of self-reflection and she asks Pochita if she's weird for the things she likes. Oh yeah, she's able to talk to him because she buys this translator device called a doggy lingus. Yeah, I know. But for real, uh, so she asks him if it's weird to be into stuff that most people wouldn't be into. And the answer is no. All jokes aside, everyone has their weird interests. Everyone has their weird kinks. And hey, I've never been one to kink shame. Apparently this is like the moral of the story because Pochita was once embarrassed of liking plants more than humans. So the message is like, you shouldn't be ashamed of your interests. Which is true, you shouldn't. Unless your interests involve fucking your dog. Like what the f Oh yeah, so I guess this show would be considered a harem, which is already like, yikes, but the song used in the ending credits has this lyric. I want to be number one in your puppy heart. Now, I don't know about y'all, but to me this implies that these human women are competing to be the winning heroine for a dog. I haven't read that far in the manga, but if you have, um, I'm curious to know how that works out.